Hey guys, welcome back to another episode, and we are starting off today in front of a gold farm that I have added to the Piglin Bartering Hall. I've done a ton of off-camera work. We've got a gold farm now, just your standard stock turtle egg based farm. There's turtle eggs uh, running up through these columns here that the piglins are attracted to, and then they fall down to their death. Um, and then when they die, their drops are combined into a shulker loader. And once the shulker is full of nuggets, it's sent along these dropper lines here and up this dropper tower to our auto crafter. This is Ilmango's design. And it's pretty simple, just nuggets in, ingots out. So if we take a full shulker of ingots, that box gets automatically broken and replaced with a new full shulker of ingots. We can then craft all these ingots into, uh, or nuggets, I'm sorry, I meant to say nuggets. Um, we craft all of these nuggets into ingots, and then we put these in here, and I'm just going to force it uh, all the way full so that we can see what happens. That gets broken, and then the full shulker of ingots gets sent along this line here, over to this elevator, and up to a shulker loader up here that starts distributing those ingots to our piglins. And then that feeds the uh, sorting hall over here and bulk storage that we covered in previous episodes. So that's its own self-contained cycle. Uh, full ingots go all the way out over there and are emptied for the piglins. And then once this box is empty, the empty will be sent back along this return line here, over here, down here, over, and back into the top. So that just keeps endlessly cycling. Full sent over there, emptied, empty returned over here, and then you manually fill it back up here while you're crafting. And then over here, this is its own self-contained system as well. The full nugget boxes come up. Um, so these are all full of nuggets here. Once I've emptied a nugget box so that I can start crafting, the empty falls down here, gets dispensed out, and goes all the way down here and sent along this dropper line and put back into our shulker loader here and filled back up with ingots. So that guy, that creates a full loop there as well. And what that gives us is a completely automated piglin bartering hall. The only work that we have to do, the only player interaction, is crafting the nuggets into ingots. But other than that, we've got fully auto gold farm back there that just requires the player to be within spawning range. And then once crafted, the ingots go all the way over there, get turned into items. Those items get all fully sorted over here in our sorting hall and sent down into bulk storage. And yeah, I think it's done and ready to be decorated. We want it to look like this on the inside, not like this. So I'm gonna get started on that and do a build montage. Now we're rolling the dice a little with this room. I designed it with only four walls, one of which will be taken up by the auto crafter, one will be taken up by the nether porter so that we can be tied in with the nether porter network, and the other wall will be taken up by a rail station, which we haven't even designed yet, but we're going to connect up this farm, um, the XP farm, and the nether hub with rail for bulk transport, and the back of the room is the hallway that leads from this room into the sorting hall that we've already built. And that leaves us with no usable walls, and we still need one more portal in this room so that we can access the overworld from here. The reason we need that is because we happen to be directly over the coordinates for a witch hut in the overworld. So this is, in addition to being our gold farm and piglin bartering hall, this is also going to be how we access our witch hut. Now I've got the real estate worked out. We're going to be putting a stairwell in the middle of the room that leads down to a portal. The problem is, portals work differently when you're above the nether ceiling. They don't sync up the same way they do when you're below the nether ceiling. So we're going to have a lot of trouble keeping those two portals separate from each other. So when we're done with this room, I'll jump into a creative world and talk you through my plan. But I have not tested it yet, so I have no idea if it's going to work. <laughs> And if it doesn't work, then this whole thing is for naught, because the two portals will fight with each other and our nether portal won't work. Every time we try to use it, our ender portal is going to pop out of the, the overworld portal instead of the ender portal portal. So, uh, fingers crossed, I hope it works. 
and we'll uh, we'll test it out here in just a minute. But before we solve that problem, we should give this thing a test drive because I think we have everything connected up. Everything that's left, like connecting the ender porter and all this business in here, these are all just separate projects. But the main project, the gold farm connected to the crafting station, connected to the piglin bartering station, and then the sorting system and the bulk storage, all those pieces are connected together now. So we should be able to do a dry run. So let's look at each step. If I take all of these ingots out of here and then close the menu, this should break and get replaced with a full one. Good. And then we'll craft these into ingots. And then when we place these in here, as soon as I close the menu, this should get broken and sent down into the system. We should see it fly past over here. There it is. Good. And then when these lights turn on, that indicates that the piglins are trading. Good. And then we should see these lights turn on, indicating that the sorting system is working. Any second. There we go. Perfect. So if we open this up, we can see items are flowing in and out because this one's full. Perfect. That's done. Project in the bag. And now we just need to solve the portal problem. We're going to have one portal down here that goes to the witch hut and that portal as part of the ender porter. And like I said, these are going to compete with each other for the return trip. So when we throw our ender pearl through here, it'll work fine. It'll go to the correct um, portal in the overworld and, and land in the stasis chamber. But when we recall it, instead of coming out this portal and putting us in the center of the room here, it's going to come out this portal and do whatever. I don't know. Do the wrong thing. <laughs> Um, so we need a way around that. We need to link these up properly. All right, so we're in a creative world to talk through the problem. And this is going to represent the portal on the nether porter. And this is going to represent the portal that takes us to the witch farm, the one at the bottom of the stairs. And these down here will represent our overworld portals. They'd actually be a lot farther apart than this. It'd be eight times farther apart, but um, whatever. It, it, that part doesn't matter right now. And I'm not going to do like a full explanation on how portal syncing works, but if as long as they were synced up properly, then they would stay separate and we'd be good. The problem is things work differently when you're on the nether ceiling. What happens instead of syncing up the way you would expect is both portals in the overworld, so we're in the overworld right now, both of these portals go looking for the nearest portal within 128 blocks of them. So regardless of which of these I go through, the portal that's lower down becomes the closest portal because it's within 128 blocks of both of those portals. So everything will come through this portal. I can go through this portal and I'll come out the correct portal. But when I try to go back through it, I'm gonna come through the lower portal because again, it's closer to both of them. So what we're gonna to do to make this work is we're gonna move this portal that way. Can you see the direction? There we go. We're gonna move it that way so that its circle, its 128 radius, is dragged over so that this portal is just barely within it. And then this portal will be thought of as separate because it's not within 128 blocks of that portal. So it's kind of counterintuitive. Rather than try and get them synced up perfectly, we're gonna get them so badly synced up that it works. <laughs> and then the uh, witch hut portal, the one that we want the lower uh, portal at the bottom of the staircase synced up to that one can just be where it is that one doesn't you know it can just be somewhere sloppily near the witch hut and um, when it goes to search 128 blocks it's always going to find the lower portal before that portal so we don't need to worry about that one at all but um, that's the theory I hope it works and now let's try it so I've synced these up with portals in the overworld that should work, would work, if we weren't on the nether ceiling. Um, they're just aligned the regular way that you align portals. And you'll see that if we go through the witch hut portal, we come out at the witch hut. 
but we'll switch into spectator here and go down to the nether porter portal. This is the portal that takes the summoned ender pearl and sends it back through that particular portal. And if I go through here, we come out the witch hut portal. So if that was the ender pearl, going through that portal, it would come out here and send us right there instead of coming out right there. In fact, it wouldn't even have worked because the item that gets sent through as a signal would have failed to come through. So what we're going to do is go back to the overworld and we're going to take that ender pearl stasis chamber, which is right down there, and we're going to move it. Uh, we're going to move it due east, um, a random number of blocks. I don't know yet what the right amount is going to be, but we'll move it somewhere over here. And for safe measure, we're also going to put it up in the sky. I think the higher we go with it, the more likely we are to catch the correct portal with, with the very edge of this portal's circle of influence. And then uh, we'll leave that one down there and its circle will catch the correct portal at the bottom of that staircase. So I'm going to play around with that off camera. I figure I'm going to need to do this six or eight times before we get it right. Because if we go too far on the first try, when we go through that portal, we're just going to come out in the nether somewhere random. Because if it's out of range of both of our nether portals, it'll just create a new portal in the nether. So we need to be close enough that it picks up one of our two portals. And we're just banking on there being a position that we can find that only catches the one portal. So I'm going to get to work on that. Okay, it did indeed take several tries, <laughs> like seven, I think. Um, but I think we found it. We definitely needed to come up to the build limit. And we are, I'll just drop down here a little bit so you can see. The witch hut is way down there. And we are up here. So that gives you some idea of how far away we had to go. But we are just close enough that the 128 block influence around this portal just barely reaches the portal that we want and not the portal at the bottom of the staircase. So let's go through and give it a test. And there we are, we're in the correct portal. This is where the ender pearl comes out and lands on the floor. And uh, if we go back through the witch hut portal, we should come out at the witch hut which we do, excellent. And then when we go back, we should go out at the witch hut. We should come out the witch hut portal, which we do. And then we'll go through here just to test it another time. Perfect, that's the path our ender pearl takes. And then back the other way. Aha, linked up, perfect, that works. Okay, so I added a few finishing details to this thing. We've got the names of the locations behind us, and I also went outside and wired it up with the rest of our nether porter network. And I went ahead and put the facade in for the rail station. It's not wired up to anything, it doesn't do anything, but it completes the room at least, and then in a later episode we can wire in the guts and connect it up. Uh, I also added a couple atmospheric details, some cracking in the roof here, some vines that have poked through, and some dripping lava right there in the corner. You can barely see it, but once in a while you get a little drop through that adds some neat nethery atmosphere to the room. Um, and then this guy is wired up. So I think we'll wrap up today's episode by taking a look at some changes I made to the XP farm. I incorporated some recommendations that people made in the comments, and then I made a few other changes to the design. Alright, so first thing I did was move the stairwell that didn't fit here anymore. This was this used to be our redstone access um, hidden stairway and if you watched the last episode you'll know that there's a bunch of new stuff in here that powers the sorting system right here. So I moved it over here and it did fit. Just hit that button up there. We get our stairwell. And if we hit it again, it closes up. 
And then someone in the comments called J.M. Nero pointed out that we don't need to use Splash Potion of Harming. Splash Potion of Regular Water does the trick now, since the new update. And I just love seeing it, so I'm going to race over here and watch these come into the storage. <laughs> Alright, and... Cool, I love that thing. Um, yeah, so we don't need um, Splash Potion of Harming. We just need regular water, which we get from which we get from the Piglin Bartering Farm. So we have no shortage of those anymore. And the last thing I want to show you was a recommendation made by Mesotech. And we'll go into spectator mode to show that. This is the sorting system that we installed in, I think, the last episode. And we had some huge clocks down here. And Mesotech showed me... Uh, an idea for a tileable, very simple, also silent clock to power these dropper elevators. We no longer need the buffer in here, and uh, there is one buffer in the dropper above it, but no big deal. Much, much smaller, still silent. Love this. I've replaced a ton of my clocks with this clock. It's so great. So uh, thank you, Mesotech, for the recommendation. All right, guys, I think we're going to call that an episode. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.